All right, so I'm going to teach you guys how to muzzle train. Um, Durga's a pretty intense dog, so if she ever goes to the vet or out in public, I may one day need to muzzle her for whatever reason, um, especially if she actually ends up doing personal protection work. There is a portion of that where the dog works with a muzzle on. So you do it the same way you do any other task or obedience. We're going to lure it and mark it. We're going to lure the dog into position, mark the behavior, and then reward her for it. Um, so we're not going to make a big deal out of this new thing, though, right? We're just going to slip it in with our obedience training. And right here when I'm working with her, um, I don't get to do a whole lot of obedience with her as far as like formal obedience because up till now she's just been so so high drive and she can't sit still long enough she shakes and you can see how she gets real worked up here but now we got her now we got her working on it and I'm not using any verbal commands whatsoever no verbal commands whatsoever just marking the behavior and rewarding it um, I'm gonna teach her all these different positions that she's going to eventually go into on command but for right now it's mainly about following my hand um, at this point sometimes I have a treat in my hand sometimes I don't and that's the beauty of it once you really teach the luring you could you know uh, you could transfer it over time to where they just follow your hand and it doesn't actually have to be a treat in there now Coming up here in a little bit, I want to give you some examples of positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. So in this particular training session, we're not going to be doing any discipline because the dog does not truly understand anything 100%. So there's not going to be any discipline. It's going to be positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. So uh, when she does lure into position or follow the lure like I want her to, her positive reinforcement is going to be to get the treat. But there are going to be times where when I want her to heal and she walks past my leg and I have to reset her or something like that, she doesn't get the treat. And that's negative reinforcement. Negative reinforcement is not punishment. Don't, don't confuse that. Um, so when we introduce her to the muzzle, we're going to lure her snout into the muzzle, you know, set her up for success. You're not going to try to just grab the dog and put it on them because like I explained before that's that spatial pressure is going to be invasive to them so you want them to want to put their nose into the muzzle and the way you're going to do that is by putting your reward inside the muzzle and since they already understand luring they're going to stick their nose to the tree and boom they put their nose in the muzzle you get them used to it over a little bit of time and uh you have them hold it a little longer and a little longer and then afterwards make sure you play with them because for them to not only they have to contain themselves mentally and physically but you're actually putting something that's restraining their muzzle on their face um, this is going to build up a lot of frustration so make sure you let the dog get it out um, immediately after we get done with our obedience our little formal training session whatever you want to call it I let her wild out and go play and I still have her do a little bit of obedience, you know, a little bit of cap and drive. Um, I want to practice the out command, but for the most part, it's all for fun. It's all for her. Give the dog whatever it wants to do. If it wants to play fetch, you play fetch with it. If it likes to tug, you tug with it. It's, uh, it's a rewarding experience uh, to, to cap the overall work that the dog has done. So you're going to reward each individual behavior with your treats and so on and so forth. But at the end of the training session, you want it to be uh, you want it to be an event. You know, you want the dog to know that there is going to be a good reward coming for all this pressure that they're taking on and not doing what they impulsively want to do. Right. Because the dog doesn't naturally want to obey your commands. I mean, it kind of does. He wants to please you. But, you know, your dog doesn't want to lay down when you tell him to lay down. He does it because you asked him to. So you need to give the dog a good enough reward for that to where he's going to want to do that. My dogs, for the most part, if I didn't play with them and give them this outlet at the end of the obedience session, I may be able to get them to the level that they're at, but I, I honestly don't think so. And even if I did, it wouldn't be as solid. 
you see Durga here, when she understands something, she does everything 110%. Everything is fast and, and, and done with some oomph. You know, when I say Durga come here, she doesn't walk to me, she runs to me. When I say Durga go bite, she doesn't go over there and just bite it. She, she hits it like a missile. You know, when I tell her to sit, she slams her ass on the ground. When I tell her to lay down, she, she drops quick. When she truly understands something, she goes hard for it. But she only does that because of the high level of motivation. So this game at the end of her training session is going to be what motivates her. But you're not going to get this right off the bat. All right, You're going to have to do this over time. And when the dog sees the pattern, that's, that's when you're really going to start to see the difference. You know, switch up your training sessions where you do your formal obedience first and then you give the game afterwards. Now, a lot of times I will do it the other way around to calm the dog down at first. But then you transition it and flip it on them and give them the reward at the end. Once you've got them to the point where they can uh, where they can physically and mentally manage that. So, you know, you don't want to train the same way for consistently throughout the dog's life you want to switch it up on them that's how you get a well-rounded dog Good girl.